Paul is speaking to the Corinthian church and says, look guys, uh, the way you should look at us, the way you should perceive uh, Paul, Napolis, and Peter, let a man so consider us, look at us as servants and stewards. So that's how we should perceive ministers of God. Look at them as servants of the Lord and as stewards of the mysteries of Christ. The one thing that God is asking from us is he's asking for us to be faithful. That's what God wants of those who are his servants and his stewards. He wants us to be faithful. That's the thing that God is looking for us. It really doesn't matter how, what people say about you. Because ultimately... God is going to judge you and me, and he's going to judge us according to the motives of our hearts. So God is not going to judge us by the significance of our work, or by the size of our work, or by the accolades that we receive from man. He's not going to judge us according to that. He's going to judge us according to the motives of our hearts. People tend to identify themselves put labels on themselves by certain streams. It used to be called denominations. Today we use a modern word, streams. Which stream do you belong to? So each stream uh, tries to create their own distinctiveness and their own flavor of how they do the same thing. But look, what makes you really different from the other? What do you have that you didn't receive? We all receive from God's. And if you receive it from God, why do you pretend that you didn't receive it from God as you got it by your own self? Is what Paul is asking. In other words, really, we are not different from each other. We belong together. So Paul is writing to them and he reminds them, look, I am your spiritual father. And you are my beloved children. So he doesn't say you're my children. You're my beloved children. It means I love you dearly. Right? And I am speaking to you from that perspective. I'm speaking to you as a spiritual father. Because I have brought you to faith, uh, uh, to Christ, to the gospel. So he's speaking to them as a spiritual father. But from this passage, I want to highlight a few things about what um, a, a true spiritual father is. You see, uh, all of us should grow up to become fathers and mothers in the house of God. We're all born into the kingdom as babies, spiritually speaking. But we have to grow. God wants us to become sons and daughters. And he wants us eventually to grow up to become fathers and mothers in his kingdom, in his house. So that we are able to nurture other people. So, everybody can parent. But to be a father and mother takes a lot more effort. To be a father and a mother, you take somebody from a place of immaturity to a place of maturity. So the call here, which I want to extend to all of us is, look, we need to grow up to become fathers and mothers in the house of God. In chapter 5, Paul addresses the second major issue in the local church at Corinth. The issue of sexual immorality. There is a man in the Corinthian church, continuing and willful Sexual sin. Now Paul was in Ephesians at the time and he was writing this. He says, though I'm absent, meaning I'm not there in Corinth physically. I have already judged this person. So now he says, in the local church, I want you to do this quickly. Take out the yeast and uh, let us be that lump that is clean. Where Paul says, look, you've got, if a person is continuing uh, an unrepentant, willful, rebellious sin in the church, whatever it is. Not just sexual immorality kind of adds to that list. He says, what you need to do, you need to put that person out. And have no, uh, he says, you know, no company, meaning don't mix up, don't mingle together with them. So the whole purpose in dealing in such discipline is so that uh, he, he may be ashamed, he may come back to his senses, he may be restored. What about grace? You now the Apostle Paul is the one who taught us about grace. I mean, in fact, in all of his other epistles, he writes about the grace of God. He says, we have received abundance of grace. What about grace? The Bible says, grace and truth came to us through Jesus Christ. So truth is the other side of 
the same coin of grace. Truth is always ministered with grace. If truth is not ministered with grace, then it is not truth. It is something else. Are you understanding? The grace and truth goes together. That means we have to call sin, sin. We have to discipline where discipline is needed. Grace does not displace divine discipline. Grace is accompanied with divine discipline. That is the grace of God. 